And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This week, we're going to take a break from sports and kind of go to a summertime sport, if you will. We, we, we always have the opportunity, and we always try to take advantage of the opportunity to talk hydroplane racing. We're going to talk with folks from the uh, 5 to the 5 Vintage Group. Uh, they are here today. They're going to talk about the fundraising effort to bring the Gold Cup Miss Madison back to town, which is exciting news for those of us that lived through the heyday. Kerry Strauss, Rob Holt, Michael Fine, and Dave Johnson in with us this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Who's going to step up first? Good morning, Tim. Rob, good morning to you. <laughs> uh, got the announcement a few weeks ago about what you guys are doing. Uh, let's kind of jump right into it and find out, first off, for those that may not know about your organization, what's it all about? Okay, well, first of all, thanks for having us. Our sure. group really appreciates you having us here, talk about the boat and what we're doing. And um, about four years ago, we started the 5 to the 5 organization. Um, the first ob objective was to put on a vintage event, which we did for the first two years, and we had anywhere from 25 to 35 boats. We couldn't have it this year because Mother Nature played a part, and we weren't allowed. We couldn't get on the water, so we had to cancel. But we will have it again next year. But we, that was our first objective, and then from even in the early stages, we'd always talked about possibly having a museum. I mean, that's been a dream of ours, really from day one, and um, it's just come together here in the past. I don't know, maybe two or three months where there's a possibility of a building downtown we're looking at and and then the, Miss Ma the 71 Gold Cup Miss Madison, that's a possibility now and just things kind of snowballed and that's kind of where we're at at this point. So that, I guess it would lead one to believe that you guys are all vintage buffs, so to speak. Absolutely. <laughs> But we love boat racing, right. any kind, it doesn't matter. We love boat racing. Right. Uh, for you guys to, to get involved with bringing the, the Gold Cup boat back to Madison, um, it's it's a monumental task because it's it's not free, it's not cheap, it's not easy, and there's a lot of details that go with it. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, and we really did, uh, as we discussed this and as the, the possibility of a building came into play and into fruition, we had um, one of our newer volunteers um, that was really interested in the boat that came down and talked to Dave and the rest of the crew about how do we, who is it that has it, how do we acquire it, how do we get that back to Madison, Brad McAllister, who lives here in Madison. And he had actually emailed the current owner a couple of times and um, was really passionate about this. And he's really who kind of initiated this um, for us and, and his passion. And um, certainly it played into our vision as well of the museum and being a centerpiece of the museum and bringing that boat back to Madison. So as Brad reached out to the current owner, the current owner checked with, <coughs> excuse me, one of our other volunteers who he knew he was friends with and kind of verified, hey, is this Brad McAllister guy legit? Right. And once he, he was cool with that, that's when we really started the negotiations. We got on a conference call with him, um, hashed it out, and, and um, we believe it's a priceless piece that needs to be in Madison, and that's what the current owner believes too. But you may have seen in the Courier, may have seen on our Facebook page, the owner has made some comments that um, he does have plans to continue to restore the boat if we are not able to purchase it from him and then it would be shared between Madison and Seattle at that time um, but we want to get that back here in Madison full-time it's it's been a boat that that since it was retired its last year to run was in 71 from the the time it retired it's it spent a lot of time in Madison it was part of the movie um, but it, it, years ago it left Madison and it's been in a couple of different hands and probably the shape it's in right now is needs to be given some attention. Hey, good morning, Tim. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, you know, when Muscatel took it back to Seattle, it set outside under tarps, and uh, the tarps deteriorated. And as Randy would go down and, and visit uh, his uh, boneyard, and uh, he saw the tarps deteriorating, he said, this has got to be uh, changed. So he approached Kim about buying a boat, and he bought the boat, and he took it back to his home above Seattle and uh, kept it under a uh, carport and uh, upgraded the trailer you know a little bit to make it roadworthy uh, he's got the boat about as good as it's going to get without restoring yeah. well without restoring it right but um, it is uh, it's in pretty bad shape right but it's not bad enough that we can't 
bring it back. Right, and, and that, that kind of brings me to my next question of how, how bad does a boat have to get? Because you've restored boats. How bad does it have to get before you can't bring it back? There's no such thing as you can't bring it back. <laughs> I mean, as long as there's wood and as long as there's screws and there's, as long as there's epoxies and we have paper and pencil to draw diagrams, we can always bring something back. So we don't want it to go too far because it just makes the job more expensive and more harder. But we can do pretty much whatever has to be done. You want to give a little background of this boat? Well, it's yellow. <laughs> and it's mahogany. Uh -huh. But no, uh, the, boat's, uh, the boat is the second Miss Madison, you know, and uh, it was, uh, people think it was donated by Samuel DuPont, but actually we bought it from Samuel DuPont. And um, its, its history has been long and hard. It's been good and bad. The highlight, you know, was when it won the Gold Cup. Uh, Ed O'Halloran, Marion, uh, not Marion, but uh, Buddy Byers, Ed O'Halloran, and the, uh, the upcoming guys between then and now have seen a lot of time in that boat. And then it just took its glory day, and then we just took it and put it, put it to bed. And obviously, um, it didn't realize how important it was going to be in the future, or we would probably pay more attention to it. Boat was, if I'm remembering correctly was built in the late 50s is that right you know yeah i think it was built in the late 50s and i think we got it in like 64 five 60, i think 63, 63 if i remember yeah, yeah, I think, after yeah. our original boat i think was destroyed in detroit at, exactly. a, at, a, at right. a gold cup qualification uh but we were able to pick up that second boat um it was it was at best um a back runner until the 70s and then it had a short run of glory, but from the last half of 70 to 71, it, and it finished its career out really strong. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better finish in a, in a career than that boat. And then to come along and have, have it revitalized by making a movie behind it, you know what I mean? The boat actually uh, has seen the glory days. It certainly has. Um, talk about, uh, we talked a little bit about your organization, but for those that want to be involved with your organization, for the five to the five, what do they have to do? If you get the boat back and you want people to come and volunteer, what do people have to do? Come down, show up. Um, you know, we will be more than glad to let anybody come down and participate in helping us do, because there's going to be so much to do. Right. You know, but before you even start working on things, you got to clean it up. Fix it up, prepare it, so you can get it on a jig, and you got to take it. It's just so much you have to do. So there's a lot for anybody that can do anything. Mm -hmm. Bring them down, we'll put them to work. To restore a, 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 a smaller hydroplane, smaller area to work with. This is an unlimited hydroplane. How big of a challenge is this going to be? <laughs> big. <laughs> um, much different. Um, although you know the same, but much different. Uh, everything has to be. Like McDonald's here, supersized. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a little more pre-planning, a little mm -hmm. more thought, um, more room, uh, bigger tools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, nothing that can't be, you know, uh, work, worked out. Right. That's one reason we're working on trying to get a building downtown because we need the area right. to work on, be able to work on it and right. store it. Talking with the uh, gentleman from the vintage five to the five uh, uh, hydroplane. Of course, uh, those guys uh, put an event on. Uh, in uh, September, uh, we will talk more about the restoration of the 71 Gold Cup Miss Madison and happen to get it back to Madison first. We'll talk about that in a minute. Coming right back to McDonald's here on Works 96.7. We're talking with Gary Strauss, Rob Holt, uh, Michael Fine, and Dave Johnson from 5 to the 5, the Vintage Unlimited Hydro event they have every fall. And they're in a fundraising effort to bring back the Gold Cup Miss Madison, the 71 Gold Cup winner. And guys, you know, we're talking about a building and 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 uh, um, a museum and all this. And, you know, it's, it's this is a fundraising event, but it also it takes land and it takes money and it takes manpower. And it, where are you going to find all this in Madison? Yeah, it, it's certainly quite an undertaking, and that's part of why um, we have sat on the news for just a little bit here mm -hmm. trying to get ourselves organized, and um, we want to give a shout out to our partners at Historic Hoosier Hills. We're under their umbrella for um, being a nonprofit. They've really helped us take the, uh, the information and organize it and get ourselves um, ready to go public with this announcement. 
as Rob said earlier, kind of all this has fallen in our lap at a very similar time, right around the time we, about a week before our event was supposed to go this mm -hmm. year. So we had a lot going on um, trying to decide, do we run or do we not run? Right. And then trying to handle these two pieces of information. Um, you know, we can't find all the help and the funds in Madison. Right. And that's why we've got um, information out on how to help fundraise um, with mailing a check to Historic Hoosier Hills under our name, or we just set up a GoFundMe page, mm -hmm. um, which you can search for Help Bring Miss Madison Home and find that page on GoFundMe. Um, and we've already had people on our Facebook page offer to donate time and help mm -hmm. if we get it back to town. Right. And, and, and in addition, we do have a couple of individual potential donors that have talked about giving a significant portion of what the boat costs to us. So mm -hmm. that although it's been slow so far from right. a fundraising standpoint, which we anticipated, right. we do have some significant interest out there in getting this boat back to Madison. Do you want to uh, divulge how, how much it's going to take to get the boat back? Yeah, the boat itself is 150000 mm -hmm. And um, that's been a lot of um, debate online and on our Facebook page on I that price tag. I can only imagine. And we understand that too. Right. Um, absolutely. Uh, but that was really... When we negotiated, we didn't negotiate at that price. Right. We, we wanted to go lower, of course. Sure. That's how you negotiate. But right. as the current owner has plans for it, he wasn't trying to sell the boat. Mm -hmm. So we approached him, and this is the number that we settled on. And as I stated earlier, we believe as the centerpiece of this museum, this will be priceless for this town and for us because we're not just going to have it sitting in the museum. We're going to have it on the river. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the cool thing about this museum, the vision of the museum. It's not going to be one where you come and just look at things. It's going to be an interactive museum. We want to get school kids involved in helping us build engines and work on boats and the woodworking um, the engineering school at Hanover College, right. Ivy Tech, all of our partners here, we want this to be an interactive museum where the six to 10 boats that we could have there mm -hmm. will all be able to be put on the river mm -hmm. at any time that we want. You And you look at, at, at getting more people involved and getting uh, schools involved like that and and uh, and un that helps educate and, and, and let them understand the history of, of boat racing in Madison, which goes back a long, long way. Yeah, absolutely, and that's really the vision of that museum is trying to bring the community and the younger generation into the history of this sport, and that's we've all grown up in it, and we all are kind of vintage at this point, <laughs> and we want to bring the the younger generation into um, the knowledge of the sport and get them passionate about it as well. They have a, a, a hydroplane race boating museum in Seattle. It it houses several uh, vintage unlimited hydroplanes. Do you and you know what? I don't want to think outside the box too far, but just kind of since we're living some dreams today let's let's talk about maybe where does this go if you secure the 71 gold cup and and you are able to secure it is is the sky the limit for what you guys can do well yeah Tim it is but you know something else we I would like to remember myself is um, this gold cup boat is the very most important piece that we have for sure. the museum but we also have to realize where we arrive from and we arrive from the smaller class boats also the seven liters the six liters the five liters the 220 you know the 221 you know you name it they're there so we have to uh, we have to uh, know where we started from as our group we have five boats now you know mm -hmm. so it won't it won't be limited to unlimited it will be limited to limiteds too yeah <laughs> if you got that one the, but, more, um, the more the merrier yes right so we we have all class of boats that we want to and we don't even uh, disregard the idea of outboards mm -hmm. you know the, the uh, them guys so it's going to be open for all classes of boats so um, I know some people think um, even, you know, well, it's only unlimited, you know. No, it's not. This museum is going to be for all classes of hydroplanes. So um, we just want the Miss Madison to be our fulcrum point for this museum. Talk about where you got the mic. Go ahead and talk about your, your vintage boats. What do you have? Oh, well, my, my wife's version or my version? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we have uh, we have a six liter. Mm -hmm. uh, the boat was built in New York by a guy named Bob DeLong. It was uh, after the the pattern after a, after a Jones, but believe me, it's a uh, it's nothing like a Jones. Mm -hmm. Bob was a cabinet maker, and um, so we made some adjustments and with the help of Mike Hansen, we got some uh, lines secured with the shaft and the engine. And the boat's a, got a 368 small block. Uh, 
uh, uh, believe it or not, it runs quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a it's a fun boat to drive. It's like driving a, I, I say a Greyhound bus because if you've ever been on a new Greyhound bus, the air rides so nice, you know. <laughs> well, it's like driving that boat. Uh, not like my close shave when you're sitting behind the engine, it nearly break your neck just whipping you around. Mm -hmm. It's a fun boat to drive. Yeah. Anybody else own yes. vintage? Yeah, my son and I have a natural high boat, mm -hmm. and it's the old round cab over. Mm -hmm. So and he he drove it two years ago, and he built it. Him and Dave put it back together and worked the long hours on it. He he loves it. Why uh why why did you guys get involved? Well, we got involved with his group. Mm -hmm. Well, my son would, went down to the shop and mm -hmm. came friends with Dave, and they got to talking, and then this boat came available, mm -hmm. and it when we got that boat, what, three years ago, I think, and there was not much to it. You talked earlier mm -hmm. about what, what right. it take. I mean, this thing, there was not much to it when we got it, and uh, they put a uh, sponsor on it and did all kinds of work on it, and it really looks nice now. When you when you get a boat that, that needs a lot, it'd be like me, going out and buying a vintage boat, I don't know anything about restoring. How in the world do I know what I'm supposed to do? That's where Dave comes in, man. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Rob. <laughs> you know, Tim, funny you said that. Rob, Rob's and, their, and Trey's boat sat in the field in Minnesota for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, had no transom, and the sponsor was pretty bad on it. And uh, so we put all new transom, all new sponsor, new decking, you know. Um, and, and, and we put a small 283 in, in it. Uh, now, Trey. I think Trey's still learning to drive. I mean, but uh, the boat's a cool boat. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. And you know, while we're at, talking about this, I'd like to, to really send out thanks to the guys in the shop, you know, that helped us do this. Sure. Uh, Paige Taff, Nick Lobdell, you know, just uh, those, those guys are staples there. And uh, Brian Kelly, who's come on board. Mm -hmm. uh, not Brian, but uh, Bernard. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernard come on board, and he's building. He's been a, a great instrumental to our um, our program. So thanks to all those who come and help us out. Where's the shop located? 1002 West First Street. Michael, they, they've thrown you under the bus now. It's it's time I for you to go. I feel the wheels are rolling backwards. <laughs> Actually, I went over once, and now they're coming back for some more. I they think. are. You are coordinating everything, just sitting there, and now everybody wants you to talk, so now is your time to shine. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that before. My <laughs> wife would be right now. She'd be saying, oh, gosh, no, don't let them go, you know. Um, basically, I'd like to talk a little bit about the fundraiser mm -hmm. and what we're looking at as, as far as the um, – the goal to raise two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the reason is because we have the possibility of a matching grant with the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that would give us a total of five hundred thousand dollars I, I just want everybody out there to understand that the boat is vitally important to be the centerpiece of the museum but at the same time the money we're trying to raise now for in this fundraiser is to help us start the museum it's to help us look at a building, do renovations, more than just the boat and putting the boat together. And the museum for five to the five, I believe is going to be the focal point of what we are and what we can give for Madison and to the people and the students in Madison, um, which, you know, uh, Carrie's touched on before. But if we raise $250,000, we have the possibility of having $500,000 to use to help us with the grant um, to build the museum, renovate the museum, and do some things that you know we weren't going to be able to do. Right. So um, I think it's a fantastic opportunity, but we have to have the pledges in by December 3rd mm -hmm. to be able to go for the grant. And that's that's really why we're pushing. We're, and it, it, it's a short run to, to December the 3rd, so it's, it's got to be quick. Um, uh, to, again, to secure a building, to renovate a building, to, to make a building happen, that's part of the process. And then to restore the boat and get it ready to go in, that's another part of the process. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle out there that need to try to come together in a short period of time. Absolutely. But uh, it's, I, we've, I think, personally, it's very important to Madison, Indiana, um, and the people in Madison and, and the, the people around Madison. Um, we know that bringing the kids in, that's, I think that's one of the main focal points as far as I'm concerned, to give them 
you know, the ability to come in and see what these boats are about to help the hydroplane uh, community move forward in the future by raising interest in these boats to let people understand what they are and yet let the kids come in and look at these boats and understand what engineering is and give them a broader out outlook on life and the ability, the possibilities, not only to to work on these boats, to, but become an engineer and possibly, who knows, you know, work in the space program. Right. Go look at the stars, you know, motivate them to move forward because we need engineers. We need engineers in Madison, Indiana for businesses here, and we need engineers just for this country. So. You, you, the museum talk in Madison has been going on for a long time, and it's been going on ever since I was a kid that Madison needed a, a museum. Um, now to see it kind of on paper per se, it brings a little bit more closer to a reality check for everybody. I, you are, uh, absolutely, I think it's uh, it's something we're going to make. We're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. This group, we have a lot of people besides us sitting in this sure. group, which, you know, we have a lot of people backing us to say, yeah, we really want this to happen, and we want this to happen, and we're going to work hard to make that happen. Yeah, Tim, and as you said, it is a huge undertaking, the, just these two projects. And our original timeline for the museum was about five years out. And when we had the possibility of this building come along, um, the timeline we've put together now is about two years out Yeah. Um, in order to renovate the boat and get the museum up and running. So that really squeezed our timeline down. Now, if this building doesn't come to fruition, mm. then we probably back it up to the five-year time frame right. again because ideally we'd love to have a spot downtown. Well, close to the river. And that's that you just brought me to my next question was, you know, there's buildings around Jefferson County, but I, down, downtown is ideal. Right. I, ideal because of what we talked about. It's going to be an interactive and a functioning museum where we could pull a boat out and put it in the water just about any time we want. And, and again, that kind of attention to Madison, I think, for the tourist attractions, for the learning experience, you can't really put a, a value on something like that because that, that goes a long way. That's right. We completely agree, and um, I appreciate you saying that. It, it, again, it's a great like Go ahead, Rob. to be a destination place for the city of Madison, so it's not just for us. We want to make it something great for the city as well. Recap what we've talked about. Let's, let's talk about, and the main focus now is let's get some donations in and get this going. If there's any corporate people involved that need, want to be involved, how do they do that? Yeah. Let's let's get them let's get them rolling to get some donations in. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And there's really a couple of deadlines here. So Mike talked about this grant possibility, and and that's what's just put on our plate in the last month or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a very tight window, but we do have until December 3rd to gain pledges. It doesn't mean we have to have the money in hand for right. this grant, but we have to have pledges, letter of intent to donate for that by December 3rd in order to apply for this matching grant. Um, and then we have about four months left for the boat. So there's a couple of different timelines there that we're working with. There are two different ways right now to give, one of them being mailing a check to 5 to the 5, but mailed to Historic Hoosier Hills, RC&D, at 1981 South Industrial Park Road, Suite 1, P.O. Box 407, in Versailles, Indiana, 47042. And as I said earlier, we just launched our GoFundMe page mm -hmm. um, for this where you can give with PayPal or any of your credit cards online. And if you just go on GoFundMe.com and search for Help Bring Miss Madison Home, you can find that page. So there are two ways right now that you can give. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to mention corporate again because that's, that's going to be a, a, a big, I think, uh, boost for this if we can get corporate people involved that want to see this project through. Um, you can encourage them to do that. They can they can be a part of this. Um, looking for, and I don't want to call them uh, sponsors, but but folks that can be partners with this organization to bring this boat back. Absolutely, and there are some out there that expressed interest as we started to tease the museum as we were fundraising for our event this year. Sure, there are a couple of companies. Well, actually, more than a couple here in town that really expressed interest in the museum itself. Um, so now that we've got more. 
um, momentum behind the museum and a little bit firmer plans and a timeline in place. Um, we're hoping some of those folks will jump back out, and and we're going to reach out to them as well. And it and this this you don't have to be a boat fan to to want to see the museum come or see the boat come to Madison. This this benefits the entire not only Madison, Hanover, Jefferson County, but Southern Indiana, Northern Kentucky, everybody in the area. Yeah, absolutely. You're correct. Um, uh, your event was, was unfortunately washed out because of high water. Um, Mother Nature sometimes doesn't like to play nice. Um, you've had how many events now? We've had two. Two. This would have been our third annual. Yeah. And as you know, that's part of boat racing. <laughs> <laughs> it unfortunately and is it, part of boat racing. And the river here, you never know what's going to happen. The first two years, we just had awesome water. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of boats on the water. We ran them all day, Saturday and Sunday. And we'll do that next year. Right now, it's set for September 21st and 22nd next okay. year. So we'll have to get some approvals, but that right. that should be the dates. Tentative dates yes. and uh, it, a free event, right? to come into uh it, right now it is right we're now. in discussions it depends on how things go sure, you know sure. if it if there is a, a mission it won't be it'll be very know, minimal it'll be very minimal yeah. exactly and again I, I i was able to attend one of the two events um it's it's great to listen to the noise and watch the boat oh, that's what we love we yeah. love the noise <laughs> yeah absolutely guys we appreciate you coming in this morning and being a part of coach's corner as i mentioned at the top of the show we talk to typically coaches but Sometimes we go off the beaten path, and I can talk boat racing 12 months out of the year. So anytime you guys want to come back and give us an update, you're more than welcome to Thank come you, back. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Tim. Thanks. Uh, my pleasure. Again, David uh, Johnson, Michael Fine, Rob Holden, Kerry Strauss in with us this morning talking about the Gold Cup Miss Madison from 1971 and bringing it back to fundraising event. And, again, um, we will, once I get the information from these guys, we will have a link on our website to uh, help you um, go find uh, uh, ways to donate to them. That's going to do it for this edition of Coach's Corner. We'll do it again next Saturday, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks to A.J. Bremer in studio. Thanks for listening here on Works 96.7.